Alrighty, welcome everybody to the third and final part on our three-part series on Picasa, how to edit, manage, and uh, deal with your photos, uploading, and all of that good stuff. Um, this episode, we will talk about some basic edits that you can do through Picasa. Picasa is not Photoshop, so it's not going to be able to do all of the things that Photoshop can do, or even close to the things that Photoshop can do. It's not designed to do that stuff. However, it is designed to manage and tweak your photos and uh, to do that with ease. So in other videos, I've shown you how to tag, organize, and uh, upload those things. Um, but you may want to edit some of these. Um, so we're going to do a couple things here. I'm going to show you the editing features, uh, just a couple of them. Um, so I have uh, my pictures up here, and uh, we'll select this one. Um, if we want to go into the editing mode for this, we double click on the picture. So if I double click on the picture, now I have this uh, the full size picture right here. I'm going to show you the things that we can do to the picture. First, one of the things that I like to do most often to my pictures is to increase the saturation. Saturation in simplest terms is uh, the uh, the um, amplitude of the color, how uh, vivid the color is. So over here, we, you notice um, it took us directly into, there's these three paint brushes here. This is for the newest version of Picasa. Um, the older version, it's similar, but it, I don't think it shows three paint brushes. Um, over here, all of the different effects that we can do, and it's very easy. You can just click on any one of those effects. So for example, if I click black and white, now our picture is in black and white. If I undo that black and white down here, we go back to the original. So the thing that I like to do a lot is saturation. Saturation just, again, makes the colors look more vivid. Um, so if I click saturation right here, we have the saturation amount. Now, while saturation does an excellent job at making colors look more vivid, you have to be very careful with a lot of um, people that just start doing photo editing will overdo the saturation and starts to make things look artificial. So for example, if I take this and drag it all the way up to here, you see how these reds right here are starting to um, bleed a little bit. Over here, her shirt kind of blends into her face. The colors over here, it just it, it's not a good looking picture. So you want to be very careful with the saturation and only do it in small amounts, but small amounts go a long way. So I'm going to take it and put it right at about here. Um, if I apply the picture, our saturation has been applied to the picture. Now you might not notice too much change um, looking at it right now to what you remember. However, if we undo and redo, I'm just going to jump back and forth between the, these two buttons so that you can see the before and after. So if I undo saturation, redo, undo, redo, you see how these colors are more vivid through here. Again, undo, they look a little bit more muted and redo and things look a touch more vivid and you notice that small amount when I'm doing this you can probably notice a fairly significant amount of difference so um, saturation is my favorite tool to use but use it lightly um, <clears throat> one thing to note is that when we uh, are working with these pictures it's not actually overwriting your original picture so if you want to take this picture then and print it at uh, Sam's Club or wherever it, you can either use the uh, shop tool that I showed you before in another video but if you want to actually permanently save this then you need to click file and save once you do that that's going to overwrite the existing picture um, otherwise it'll be there essentially is permanently two copies of it the unedited and the edited version which may be fine and it may be what you want um, and if so, then don't do that. If this right here is bothering you, I moved all of my stuff to another drive, and so it's going through and re-indexing everything, so just try to ignore that. <coughs> Other things that we can do are the sepia tone. So if I click that, then you see uh, the sepias. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Um, I already showed you the black and white film grain. Uh, it uh, makes it look, if I bring it way up high, then you can kind of see it. It's just kind of an effect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. Warm feeling kind of makes it look like an older picture. Um, do some kind of glow effect, intensity, adjust that. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. So these are just different options that you can play with. Um, let's see here. Another. If we go over to this other tab, there's some. This is a new thing to the newest version of Picasa. Some preset 
things that you can do. So for example, this 1960s option right here, if I click on this, you notice the picture looks very much like an old 1960s photo would look. It automatically applies some filters to get that effect for you. I'll go ahead and cancel that. Um, there's another effect that you can get. And uh, th this limo-ish is kind of nice depending on the picture. So um, there's a motorcycle picture that did really nice with that. Just different options. You can play with the sliders. Again, this isn't destroying the picture until you actually save it, if you choose to actually save it. If you don't, then it'll just save two copies of it. Um, again, just different options that you can go around with and play with here. This vinaigrette is kind of a nice one. <clears throat> Pencil sketch. It's kind of cool, too. And so you see how I can do that just with one click. And again, you can play with all these different sliders to get different effects that you want going on here. Museum photo, drop shadow, etc., 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 neon. Okay, so uh, these are some basic effects that you can do. Also, let's go back to um, the this first one, the wrench right here. Notice we have many different options right here. The red eye removal tool is very nice. There's going to be no red eye in this picture, but uh, if you click it, it'll automatically find the red eye and remove it for you. Um, this crop is also a feature that you may want to use frequently. Um, let me go through a couple of these here and find a good one that we may want to crop. Um, say we want to crop this. I'm not sure exactly. but yeah, well, Let's crop this one right here. Say we want just the fountain specifically. If I hit this crop button right here and if this by default is on manual if you change it to 4x6, 5x7, etc. If you want to print it out as a certain type of photo or display it on a certain thing, then I would recommend that you do that. So, for example, if I want to do a 5x7 and I want the 5x7 to be standing up vertically, um, I'm going to select my 5x7 and then when I crop, I click and hold and drag and notice it constrains me. It's not exactly following the mouse pointer. It constrains me to 5x7 so that my picture is exactly five by seven in ratio. Um, once I've released the mouse, I can move around. I can expand this if I want a little higher. And notice when I go higher, the left side pops out too. Again, that's because we are telling it five by seven uh, ratio. Um, I can move the picture left and right. Uh, if you are anywhere outside of here, that's not affected. If you are inside the selection area, notice the finger. If you click and hold, you can drag it to what area on the screen you would like. So in case you need to do some fine tuning. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and hit apply right here. If I apply the picture, notice everything else is removed. It's good to do this for um, your pictures before you print them because if you have the exact correct proportions, then your picture is not going to look squished or stretched in any way. So I like to do this with any of the pictures that I print. I set them to the proportions that I want and then send them to my printing facility. As a side note, Printing your pictures at home is not cheaper. It's convenient, so if you do it um, at a convenience, that's a good thing to do, but you're not saving any money. In fact, you're spending more money because the ink that you are using costs so much to print that uh, you're not saving a dime. Plus, the uh, quality of your photo printer, while very, very good, um, the photo printers at most stores are going to be better quality. So uh, if you're doing it for convenience, that's great. If you're doing it because you think you're saving money or something, you're not. So, um, <clears throat> anyways, so I've cropped this photo here, and uh, this auto color, what this does is just kind of a quick uh, tweak. The, the computer guesses what it thinks it should be, so you can do that sometimes if you would like. I don't like to do that too much. I'm feeling lucky, it does a very similar thing. In fact, that did a good job. Notice the uh, undo. Now the picture looks a little bit more washed out, like the brightness is a bit high, and uh, if I redo it, it increases the contrast so that the blacks are more black. We don't have that washed out feeling. So that did a very good job, actually. Um, <clears throat> you can do things manually over... Well, let's finish with this tab first. Um, the, you can add text to a picture if you want. So we'll click up here and... I'll just call it Guatemala. And then I can take this and I can move this to wherever I'd like just by clicking and dragging. I can rotate it if I would like. If I click over here, I can turn it this way. I can pull it bigger or smaller. 
So let's uh, put it this way right here. And then if I hit, you can change obviously your text font that you would like. So we will do, uh, that looks nice, we'll just do that. Change the size of your font that you would like. All of these characteristics right here should be pretty self-explanatory. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and we'll go ahead and hit the apply button. So now we have the uh, Guatemala label on here. And uh, we can go in and undo that, do whatever changes that you would like to do to it. Um, change the color of the text to whatever you would like by clicking this T. Again, this is the newer version of um, Picasso, so make sure that uh, if you're following this along, you have 3.9 is what I'm working with right now. So you can change this to whatever you'd like. Um, just play with the settings there. You can change the transparency, so it's 50% transparent if you would like to do something like that. A lot of these things, again, are pretty self-explanatory and easy, which is why I like to use Picasso to do a lot of this stuff. Um, if we move over to this other tab over here, you have some basic settings, uh, fill light, highlights, shadows, color, temperature. Um, so essentially what this option, this I'm feeling lucky did, was tweak a couple of these. So if I increase the fill light, notice we're getting back to the original, where it looked a little bit more washed out. So I'm going to bring that back down. Your highlights make the whites brighter. Anything. So you notice that this area, the, here is white, this is white, this is white, is affected, and this area is very minimally affected. So highlights make the light colors brighter. Shadow does the exact opposite, makes the blacks blacker. So notice these are affected more than this area is. So playing with those sometimes gets you uh, a little bit. If your colors are off, you can play with this a little bit to get the correct setting. Neutral color picture, uh, this is kind of like a white or black balance. Um, so if you know that you have a black, like, but it has to be a true black. And the same thing you can do with white, but it has to be a true white. You can take this and click in here and notice your color adjusts. Now, because that wasn't a true black, I ended up with this result. So be careful when you're using that probably won't need to use it very much. Um, so I think that those are the main things. We have our basic settings, our crop, which you will, you will use quite a bit, um, your red eye, I'm feeling lucky, auto color, texting if you wanted to uh, do the texting, fill light, again, same, similar thing. Over here is our basic light settings, our brightness, our contrast. Over here we have some nice effects that we can do, such as a glow in effect, Cancel that. Um, I like to use the sepia sometimes, depending on what I'm doing. <coughs> and uh, so this looks like kind of a poster, travel to Guatemala type thing. Um, over here we have more effects, pre uh, pre programmed effects that you can do. Um, limo ish, we'll do that to this picture. And there, that looks kind of neat. We'll apply that. And over here, just more effects that you can. Uh, play with and uh, do such as a pencil sketch. Um, those are pretty much the basic things for editing in this. Uh, and you, you see how we can tweak a photo quite a bit. It's just a matter of a couple clicks. Looks nice. And then if I wanted to save this as the original, again, remember you have to save it or save copy if you wanted to save uh, to the original and this one. But just keep in mind that it's not affecting the original image. I can undo the limo and go back. I can undo my sepia tone and you notice we're getting back to the original picture. Undo I'm feeling lucky and we and we can go ahead and undo crop and we can remove the text from here just by clicking and hitting delete. And so notice we're back to our original picture. So, I hope this was helpful and uh have fun editing your pictures. There's a lot of powerful things that this can do, and I hope that this is really great for you. Um, we have other tech tips and stuff at www.pccomputerguy.com. You can click on the tech tip link, and uh, there will be podcasts, videos of other things, as well as articles that I've written on there. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.